Hey, what's up guys? Tugi here, back again with another video. Today, we are going to be going over my early scouting guide for NHL 19 franchise mode. I had some people say it was a little bit overwhelming. What should I look to do within franchise? And in this video, we are going to go over that right through every step, hands-on. And I'll show you guys what I've been doing at the start. Now, I will clarify in saying this doesn't mean you should follow exactly what I do at all times experiment around try out different things for yourselves because again this is still in the early stages while i might have a little bit more hands-on experience with the game than most at this point it doesn't mean that what i've been doing is the perfect way to go so remember to try things out on your own but at the start of franchise the first thing you're going to want to do is go into quick settings go down to the bottom here of course you have the ability to customize fog of war the additional information speaks for itself. You can customize this. Again, for those who aren't familiar, we'll get into it a little bit uh, once we actually load up into this and we can check the edit lines. But there is certain information, not only for prospects, but for current NHLers and AHLers that you're not going to be privy to. You are going to have to scout out these players, especially for younger players as they continue to develop. Take Braden Point. Say he starts off at an 82-83 Within two years, he could be an 87, and you're going to lose information on him. Of course, as your team plays these uh, plays these opposing teams with these players, you'll get a little bit of information. If they're division rivals and you play those teams more frequently, you'll have better information on those guys. But still, fog of war, the main thing to remember, you get as much you get as much out of it as you put into it. The more effort and work that you put into making sure you're scouting the right people at the right time. If there's someone in the NHL level that you don't have full information on, but you looked and they're lighting up the league, make sure to scout them out. Pretty easy to do. The big thing here, though, the big setting that we're going to be talking about is auto-scouting. Uh, what is the best setting to leave it on? Because, of course, you have different options. And I was talking with a friend of mine from YouTube, Bojo KO. Shout out to him if you don't know who that is. Simply put, search Bojo KO, NHL, subscribe, because you should. And yeah, we were talking over what the best settings would be, and we both came to the conclusion that both is the way to go. So the AI themselves will scout out everything on their own, but it still had, you know, it still leaves you with the ability to go in and make changes if you see that the AI is lacking a little bit in terms of scouting certain players specifically high-end players. So that is, without a doubt, the best way to go early on. If you're not as invested into it, at the beginning of every season, you can just go ahead and hire the best scouts, leave it on both, and you're good to go. And just before the draft, maybe you take a look again at the last second at what players you need that little bit of extra information on. At the very least, though, once you first load up franchise mode, you're going to want to go over to Assign Scout. This will give you a look at everybody that you have available on your staff at the moment. You're going to have a mix of pro scouts and amateur scouts. That's pretty self-explanatory. You have your NHL scouts, your AHL scouts, and your amateur scouts, which can be everywhere from the U.S., Sweden, Finland, Czech Republic, Austria, etc., etc. The first thing you're going to want to pay attention to here, though, is the fact that every scout has an overall grade. So Blue N here, even though we, again, French names, they just kill me. With an A grade, the first thing you're going to want to do is assume, oh, well, look at that, A grade, he's an A plus in the SHL. But if you click in the right stick, that'll bring you up to Scout Info. And using the bumper, you have the ability to not only look at what they're great at actually, you know, finding in terms of attributes for players, but you're also able to see what other regions they are able to scout in. So for old Gilbert here, Scandinavia, Russia, the rest of world, Germany, you can send him to any of these places and he will do a fantastic job for you in finding these prospects. The lowest grade that I would be okay with sending him to would be a B, so AHL Atlantic and the Czech Extra Liga are also a go-to. But if you send him to the U.S. Central, He's not going to do much for you, so you're going to want to make sure, because you do have the ability to change the region with the Y button, you can send him to any region. Whatever region he's set to by default, he is not locked to. He or her, there are female scouts as well in this game, and of course if NHL players retire, they can become scouts for you as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. Whatever region 
your scout is assigned to by default is not where he is locked to. You have the ability to hire more scouts by hitting the start button on this screen, and that'll bring up the entire list. So the highest grade scouts right now that are available on the free agent list are Bs. And we'll look at Hannah Braun here. Uh, for example, again, we have the ability to scroll over, and despite the fact that she is an OHL scout, she actually has a higher letter grade in the WHL. So anywhere in the CHL, the U.S. West as well with an A-, minus, U.S. East is also okay. You can go ahead and optimize your scouts to make sure that you get the best feedback possible. Now when you are scouting, there are different settings. For pro scouts, you can scout specific players, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can look at any team and confirm that assignment. So your pro scout, Philip Lashoff, I can be like, hey, take a look at the Washington Capitals, and he'll do just that. Again, he is locked in to the NHL Metro, so he would be looking at any Metro team. So that is why it is worth, of course, having scouts in each NHL region. Otherwise, with his current settings, again, he's looking at anybody on the Carolina Hurricanes. You can also have him scout a certain group of players. So if you're looking for, say, prospects on the Hurricanes, you can set that up as well. And, of course, the other one to uh, scout team lines. Pretty self-explanatory, again, just to look at the teams and to try and get information on their players. For amateur scouts, you have two options. Find prospects, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can have it set to any, or you can try to look for certain prospect types, whether of a certain quality, or if you're looking for skaters, forwards. I mean, I mean, you can look at skaters in general, but if you're looking at centers, you can say, hey, try to find me a sniper. You can do that, and you can be that specific with it. A thing to remember, though, in the first few years of the draft, mainly the first two, you're going to have a lot of real-world players. So that might not be as relevant. The longer you go into franchise mode, and of course it's mainly down to computer-generated players, the more that will be effective and efficient for you. So your scouts, in terms of, the, um, in terms of what they are looking for, you can scout certain players on the list. You have their central scouting ranking, which you'll see more of that in a moment, but you have the central scouting ranking, you can take a look at any um, any of these options that'll find certain attributes for them. A thing to keep in mind though, playing style is fine, of course that'll help you find out whether or not they're a sniper or a power forward, strengths and weaknesses, when you look at every player, uh, eventually you'll have the ability to be like, oh okay, they have a good shot, but they're terrible defensively, you'll be able to have that information there. Skills assessment as well will help out with the attribute grades. Character assessment is not important if you're playing with the morale system off. Character assessment will let you know what type of personality that player has. So if you're playing with the morale system off, make sure to keep an eye out for that. Potential and comparison speaks for itself as well. But if you're playing with morale off, keep an eye out on whether or not any of your scouts, uh, any of your amateur scouts at the very least, are scouting for that specific deal because it will be a waste of time. So right here, Gilas is scouting character assessment. That's a bit of a waste of time. Uh, it You know, you can let your scout do its thing, but just know, of course, and as it is, it's a terrible scout anyway with an E grade. You'd want to fire him immediately. Uh, if you're playing with owner mode off, you can hire and fire scouts at will. If owner mode's on, it does cost a little bit of money. Uh, but you're going to want to change that manually to anything else. Uh, so keep that in mind. And again, find prospects is just the ability to scout out that region even further and see if there's anybody that you don't yet have on the board. So that's the early stages. Again, you're going to want to optimize your scouts by checking, uh, mainly higher and firing your worst scouts, bringing in somebody better, and then double checking to see where people succeed. Again, you can have multiple scouts in a certain region. So if you have two A plus WHL scouts, you could just knock that out of the park and then send someone elsewhere. Another thing to note, the last thing to note here, I would say for amateur scouts, before I forget, is you cannot scout multiple players, at, or you cannot scout multiple things about a player at once. So for Samuel Poulin here, I'm not allowed to say, hey, look for his playing style, and then your second assignment is to look at his potential in comparison. You can only scout one thing about a player at a time. Also note, under, uh, right, you know, under the player list, estimated date and assignment, the more players you add to the list, the longer it will take 
for that scout to get back. So keep that in mind, especially once the Stanley Cup has been awarded and you're getting closer to the draft. Keep that in mind because if you go beyond the date of the draft, of course, you will not get the info on every single player. So that is what you're going to want to look out for in the early stages. Now, you do have your draft class as well. This will be the central scouting rankings. And as you progress through the season, you will get more up-to-date info. But as it stands right now, central scouting has Jason Lockhart in at number one. Now, if you're going on auto or both for scouting and letting the AI take care of it, it'll slowly start to fill in information for these players. And we'll actually go ahead and sim a little bit. Now, I know what some people are already saying. Uh, what about, you know, what about uh, sim speed? Is it any faster? It actually is relatively faster. It's kind of nice. But we'll go ahead and move through this quickly. I also need to jump into lines to showcase, uh, you know, the pro level as far as the information that ends up being filled in, of course, as you're going along. There's kind of a lot to cover. Again, it can be a little bit overwhelming for me, not having scripted this video. I'm like, okay, don't forget this. Don't forget this. Oh, shit, I forgot this. Let me bring that up. So it's a, it's a, it's a little bit nerve-wracking because I want to make sure I can help you guys to the best of my ability. We'll just go best lines, of course. We don't have to worry about the team management. I really could have and should have turned injuries off, but it's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to progress far enough to get our first update from Central Scouting. That is the first thing that we are going to want to do. As I could probably just make a jump cut here, but normally it kicks in sooner. <laughs> Screw it! If you're familiar with my content, you know this is what you should be looking out for. Uh, so we will go to view draft class and we will have an update here. So you see now with Lockhart identified as franchise, our scout has checked him out. You can see the date uh, in which he filed that report, the amount of time scouted. So Jason Lockhart right now is looking pretty good. We also have info on Peyton Krebs. And again, as we go through the year on auto or both scouting, uh, that information will slowly start to fill out. Right around the trade deadline is when you're going to want to take a more hands-on approach. So by the trade line, you still might not have any info on Torsten Hoagland. Perhaps that's because you didn't have a scout in the SHL to begin with, or maybe your scout's just been looking at other players. That's when you're going to want to step in and try to fill in the info. Uh, but with Jason Lockhart, you can see here, 27 points in 11 games. That's phenomenal. He's not playing in the most competitive region, though. USA East, it's a C- minus in terms of strength of competition. So you need to keep that in mind, and also the player's age. So, for example, if Lockhart was 20 years old and doing that, he wouldn't be that impressive. It is still impressive, though, that a 17-year-old is scoring at that rate. Strengths and weaknesses. We know he plays a 200-foot game. Good park protection, good goal scoring. You see his weaknesses. You see his grades as well. All of that is accurate information of course the scale is there basically the brighter the binoculars are the more accurate the information is you get a look at his personality which again isn't locked in but it's also not a factor because we have morale off you can see that he plays a similar style to Sean Couturier and it is locked in that he is franchise potential so this is all information that you unlock depending on what you scout out with this player so as we progress through the season, of course, we will continue to get those updated reports from Central Scouting. Once you get to the deadline, though, is when, again, you're going to want to take a little bit more of a hands-on approach. Something to note, though, really quickly, from the calendar screen, you have the option to click in the right stick and bring up your franchise overview. This also gives you an opportunity to look at what your scouts are doing. And, of course, the little red indicator shows when they've almost completed their assignment. So you can take a look at what your scouts are doing from this alone, and you can go to assign scout from this menu as well. So it's a little bit of a shortcut, and it will save you some time. So again, we'll jump to assign scout from here. Of course, we also take a look at what some of our amateur scouts are doing, what they're looking at. The big thing to note, though, is the draft board. That's what we're going to take a look at here, as of course, there would have been a good, solid, if not decent amount of progress made throughout the season with the scouting set up the way it was. Case in point. Now, at this point in time, something to look out for is the fact that Vukasevich here hasn't been really scouted all that much. We do currently have a scout assigned to him, but we might want to take a more hands-on approach to actually get a little bit more information. It's not a full report for him 
just yet. And as you continue to scroll down through the list, again, I didn't optimize my scout, so it's not surprising that we have so many unknowns, but quite a few people have information, but not a full report. So as you continue on through, you're going to want to make sure that guys, especially in the top 100, or depending on where you're drafted, are scouted out. And of course, just an upgrade on Jason Lockhart as he is ripping that league apart. So what you're going to want to do to take more of a hands-on approach is actually fairly simple. Uh, although I will note, the draft board as well, just on a different topic, of course, the draft board as well can be helpful if you're not quite sure who to take. It'll, it'll list where your picks are projected. Of course, early on, it's not entirely sure, but it will give you suggestions as well based on who you have scouted. It'll let you know what your strengths and weaknesses are on the depth chart. So something else to keep an eye on for uh, that's what I love about this setup right now is it just gives you information and pretty much all the information you really need. Uh, but case in point here for the SHL, what we're going to do is go to scout specific players. It will show us everyone uh, and where they are scouted in this region. So for Hoagland here, right, if we scroll over medium elites. Uh, this is a complete report, comparable style to Marcus Nasland, which is extremely promising. We don't need to take a look at him at this point, but for Zanin, we don't have the lock-in on what his potential is, what all of his strengths are, the skills as well. So he's someone else that we could look to actually end up scouting out. Uh, same thing for Fromm, I do believe. So we don't have a full report on potential or skills. We could scout out either. Let's just go to potential in comparison. You're going to want to make sure you confirm the assignment by hitting start, though. Keep that in mind. Don't back out of this. It won't save. You're going to want to start, and that will set that up. One last thing, though as we jump into this, because what I like to do is try to make sure that I at least have the top 100 scouted uh, for any range, anyone who's projected in the top 100. From there, though, the next thing to look out for, you're going to want to start looking at information. So for like Jorgen Lindstrom here, he's 17, but he hasn't played a single game, so you might not want to take a look at him. Leon Larabak, seven games played, no points as a two-way defenseman, 18 years old, Debatable whether or not you want to scout him. Same thing for Barrett, Roberts. Now, let's see if we can find someone here who might be a bit further down the board, but looks like he could be a decent pickup later on in the draft. And to be honest, there really might not be anybody. Uh, Ola Forsberg. This is an interesting player to consider. He's only played three games. He has a terrible save percentage, but he's 17 years old in playing in the SHL. So an A-plus grade in strength of competition as an underaged player playing in a men's league, while the save percentage is bad, it might still be worth scouting him out. Again, just for the fact that he's playing in a men's league. Whereas with Vico here, he's 18, two games played equally as bad, so maybe not worth checking out. But a younger player playing in the higher up league, it could be worth it to take a look at him. And actually right now for the SHL, it's not working out that well for us. Uh, do we have a scout in any of the U.S. regions? We do. Let's take a look at U.S. East and Fierro. Let's see who we can find. So Popovich would be the first guy I'd look at here. And case in point, 30 points in 44 games, not in the toughest competition or strength of competition league, and at 18 years old. He could be half decent, probably worth putting a little bit of time into him and to scout him out. Corey Sopel as well, three points in 23 games, not the toughest league, but he is 17 years old. So the age is going to matter here. Same for Lee Crane. If you see a younger player in a tough competition league who's doing extremely well, he's going to be worth looking at as opposed to, say, a 20-year-old who's played 30 games and only has 7 points. He's going to be someone that you're going to want to avoid. So it's paying attention to those, to those little details, that little bit of information that is going to help you. Uh, and with the draft class as well, of course, we have the gems and busts. We haven't looked yet. Let's see if our scouts have found anybody and they have so we have one gem dennis goldman uh 66th in central scouting our scouts have him at 63rd he's locked in as a medium starter goaltender at 17 years old and see there you go 17 15 games played not the cup uh, not the toughest competition but a 920 save percentage uh, very accurate for our scouts to label him as a gem. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for those diamonds as well. Uh, whereas Von Fersen and Kyle Topping, uh, not so much. Our scouts want us to avoid those two players, and we will. So that's pretty much all you have to look to do. The only other things to note 
is that you can uh, take a look at the scout list free agency, essentially, at the beginning of free agency. So while free agency begins, you're looking at players, any scout that's hit the open market is also available at that point in time. So that's a key date to maybe snag another A-grade scout. Of course, you go to this menu here, assign scout, and hit hire scout. So whenever free agency starts, keep an eye out on that. And to answer your question as to when you will get the information on your rookies. How do I handle getting information on my rookies? Do I sign all of them out of the draft? I'm going to say no, personally. Kind of view it like last year before Fog of War was a thing. You're going to want to handle this like an NHL team and pretty much only sign your first round pick. By the end of the preseason, if you sign your first round pick and you play them for those seven games, you're going to get an early look at what they could be. If you keep them on the team, within two to three weeks, you'll have pretty much a complete picture of what that player is going to be overall attribute and potential wise. But it's still probably not worth taking up a contract spot and signing a seventh round pick. You don't have to panic, although it is tempting. You don't have to panic and sign every single player that you draft. It is okay to let the fifth, sixth, and seventh rounders stay unsigned. They will still progress. It's okay to leave them unsigned until you know their contracts up and they're due for their entry level deal it's okay to do that but obviously it is intriguing to just outright go ahead and sign everybody so with that i think that pretty much covers everything by the time i end this video and it's uploaded i'll remember damn it i wanted to mention that but i think that pretty much covers everything in terms of what you want to look to do scouting wise of what to look for especially with amateur scouts uh, and case in point here as far as prospects go. So like right now for Jack Eichel, we know how good he is, right? We have it locked in medium elite, high elite, uh, 88 overall. For Rasmus Ristolainen though, our scout thinks he's a 92. I'm not going to trust that. It's not full information. So if you're like, holy hell, is Risto really a 92? I'm going to trade for him right now. Make sure you have an, you know, make sure you have full information first, and that will continue to change as players progress. Same for Darlene. Is he actually an 83? Maybe he's an 81 or an 82. Maybe he's a little bit better. Make sure you have that full accuracy. And with your pro scouts, you can scout individuals, you can scout teams to make sure you get that information. Also, Buffalo traded for Milan Lucic. That's a that's a hell of a contract to have. Although they retain salary, so that's actually they got Edmonton to retain salary. That's not a bad deal from the AI. So with that, I think we're good. If I forgot to mention anything, I'll bring it up down in the comments below. If you have questions about anything in relation to franchise mode, ask away in the comments, and I will do my best to answer that. Uh, and if you need help with anything, just let me know in the comments section on Twitter, at Tuki24. More than happy to help. If you haven't gotten your hands on NHL 19 yet, and yes, for franchise mode, you should be excited. You should be excited in general. Uh, but again, that'll do it for this one. I feel like I'm missing something, so I'm just going to end it and stop rambling. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know the deal. Support the video, support the channel. I love you all. I love your face. I'll see you next time.